My guest today is part of a new activist group, chemchasers.com. Their focus is bringing the truth of geoengineering to the mainstream. They're going to do this by compiling a lot of video evidence of actual spraying going on as well as they're asking users to submit their own independent lab tests and this next clip is something else that the group is really trying to do compile a lot of weather reports from local media to show just how they're reporting about geoengineering without actually telling you what's going on Sometimes, occasionally, the, mil the military will uh, put some substances into the atmosphere that are detected by our radar, our weather surveillance radar. This is actually not rain. This is called chaff. This is something that the military actually let out of their aircraft uh, a couple of hours ago. It's, uh, it can be plastic, it can be aluminum, and basically it's something that they emit from the aircraft in order to confuse radar. Dominic with Chem Chasers, thank you for joining us today. Now, why was it important for you to put this compilation video together and kind of get the ball rolling uh, to talk about geoengineering? Uh, I thought it was really important for the American people to see that even the news is reporting on chemtrails. Um, they're sometimes using the code name chaff or contrails, but they are reporting on it. Exactly. We've actually played video. Uh, a weather reporter years ago was talking about chaff, and he was explaining very calmly about how it's just these metals being released into the sky, and basically it's to block the radar. Someone there mentions that it's to block these planes from the radar. Why would that be something that's important to do? Doesn't that mean other planes might be blocked from the radar as well? <laughs> but also, looking at those fibers, the chaff, I don't want that floating around in the sky. Yeah, you know, that stuff, uh, they haven't done much research on real military chaff. Um, and they say it's non-toxic, but, you know, they have they show clouds on these radars covering most of this Florida state and trails that move state to state. And that would mean that this chaff is traveling in large amounts over the U.S. Absolutely. And you mentioned when we, we talked earlier that one of the things that was really bothering you about this is that on the days that they're reporting, the children and elderly should stay inside. Uh, days, you know, where the, the air quality is really poor, these are the heavy spray days. It's kind of what prompted you to get out there and start recording these events. Yeah, um, on the local level, when I check the air quality, um, I live in a valley where some of the pollution somewhat settles. And more often than not, it's at a level five. And that means everybody should be inside. Uh, the schools are not alerted about this. Nobody seems to know when I talk to people on the street that the air is this bad. And the problem with this is, is that when I see them covering the whole valley with grids and trails, it's literally trapping the pollution in like a greenhouse. And uh, it's making it even worse. Exactly. And the chaff. Uh, those type of things, it looks a lot different than what we've seen with the chem webs. We interviewed Marie Snow a few weeks ago, and she had given us video of these chem webs. It actually looked like spider web uh, fibers, and these things were collecting all over the fence posts there um, in her city, in her town, but you actually saw this falling on your daughter's school. Uh, and that's something that should be concerning to parents everywhere. These are falling on your children's school. They're, they're falling all over the playground, in your backyard. They're everywhere. And here we have news reporters that fail to investigate and find out what this really is. Yeah, you know, a um, couple months ago, we had uh, the exact same thing happen to us that happened to Marie Snow. We were outside filming a couple very low chem trails that looked really thick and we set up a tripod and within an hour after the chem trails were laid, they had expanded, moved in front of the sun and the sky filled with these string like fibers. And we, we knew it was coming from the chem trail. And so, Dominic, all of this gaslighting and this disinformation, especially when you could see it with your own eyes, it's affecting your daughter's school. All of this stuff is what really prompted you to start the Chem Chasers web series. Talk to me a little bit about that and what do you hope to do with this show? Yeah, when um, the webs came falling on my daughter's school, that was the last straw. And we had already been filming Chem tra Trails for a few months and we had a lot of footage. So we decided to get going with this show. 
And uh, we get a lot of support. We get people from around the whole world sending us pictures and videos with the exact same patterns, the exact same sun blocking, the same grids, all of it. And uh, we hope that this show is going to be able to reach the American people. Um, I feel like a lot of the geoengineering movements just haven't gotten to the general public yet. And we think with this reality show, it might be a way to get to the average Joe. Exactly. And I know that you have a place on your website where people can submit their lab tests. Um, Marie Snow and um, her friend, I apologize at the moment, I can't think of her name, but they have the geoengineering uh, fallout evidence Facebook page. And I know she also has the, the lab uh, the information there where you can send your, your samples to the lab, it was about $40, she said. Um, but basically, people are trying to now compile this evidence, so just along with your show and independent lab tests, people can find out what is there. So is that what that, that button is there for people to submit their lab tests? And have you done any independent testing on your own? Um, the lab test section on our website is going to be available soon. We are still in the process of getting our results back. And Marie Snow's Geoengineering Fallout Evidence Group would be the best place to go if you have your own samples. Uh, she'll give you information on that lab and where to send them. We want to demand evidence. We want to know, is this safe? We want proof that it's completely safe. There, the news reporter just so casually says, oh, well, we're just doing testing and putting some metals into the air. And is it safe? Is it safe for us to breathe? And we've seen so many times in the past where, you know, we can't really trust the EPA and these other government uh, agencies to give us the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So we've got to do our own independent uh, testing. Well, what else can people do to kind of get the, get the truth out there and demand some answers? What else do you guys, you know, hope that people can bring to you? A lot of people don't even know what chemtrails look like. Um, just because you do not see a chemtrail in your sky doesn't mean they haven't sprayed in another city close by and that trail is blown over into your city and expanded and looks like a cloud by the time you see it. So be suspicious of everything in the sky. If it looks like aerosol or filaments falling out of it or strange looking, take some pictures, take a video and send it to tips at chemchasers.com. And we'll take a look at it and put it with the rest of our database. And Yeah, I think people are going to be really surprised to see just how many different kinds of, of chemtrails, geoengineering, solar radiation management. It seems like there are a lot of different types of spraying uh, that's actually going on. And I think once we can compile some evidence from around uh, the nation, possibly even the world, where else this is going on. They had a hearing in Shasta, California about chemtrails with a ton of residents that got together and went to the board with all the evidence and had a hearing to ban chemtrails. And nobody talks about this anywhere. You could find it on the trial on YouTube, though. Right. So talk to me about this ridiculously resilient ridge. Hovering over California and the Pacific Ocean is something called the Ridiculously Resilient Ridge. And it's an area of high pressure that sits on top of California, and every storm that comes to it breaks apart and is diverted around this ridge. Now, the thing that was strange to me when doing my research, I found a news clip from Ireland showing chemtrails with the news reporter talking about them, and she also explained that there was a very vast zone of high pressure over the same area with the chemtrails. Now, we've seen heavy spraying in California along the coastline. We call it the chem barrier. And as these storms roll in, they literally break up on the chem barrier, and we never see any of the rain. So these chemtrails can be used for weather modification, droughting, all of the above. Right, exactly. We actually uh, did a whole report on that. I did a whole segment, Time Magazine and a lot of other um, influential media out there were kind of coming out and saying this solar management could have devastating effects on millions of people around the world because they don't actually understand the implications of messing with the weather, controlling the weather. It could cause huge droughts in some places, famine, uh, torrential rain in some areas, and just mess with the weather systems there. Obviously, we've seen a lot of typhoons and tsunamis and just really bizarre weather patterns. Uh, but of course, you know, you do have other places where there are droughts going on. So it's already kind of out there that 
there's they know it's an issue, they know it might cause problems, but they don't want to admit that it's actually already taking place. So that's what you guys are here to to just gather evidence that yes, in fact, it is going on. Yeah, and um, we got a new episode that's going to be coming out very soon called The Grid, where we show undeniable proof of a six line grid being made in seven minutes. And these grids can be made so fast, people don't even see that it happened. And they can expand and turn into a full cloud cover and float to the next city within 30 minutes where the unsuspecting civilians think it's a real cloud. Wow. Yeah. And I've seen those days here in Austin myself where I've, I've walked outside and you just see the grids, the hash marks all over the sky. And it's almost instantaneous that my eyes start uh, watering and I get my throat tightens up and it's it's almost like I'm having an allergy attack but I don't really have allergies and it always coincides with really heavy spray days I just don't understand how people just can't look up can't see that clouds do not make perfectly <laughs> squared grids in the sky it's not normal those are not from airplanes because as we know contrails dissipate they go away yeah you'll have a little bit of a jet stream but it goes away. It doesn't just float in the sky for the entire day. Um, one more thing I'd like to add before I go is that it's not only a cloud program, it's also a haze program. And these aerosol sprays that they spray up there, they may look like clouds, but if you'll notice over the day, they will dissipate and fall down in a haze. And if you live in a valley like I do, you can look all around the horizon and you can see this haze fill in the valley. And it's truly disgusting. Well, Dominic, thank you so much. And again, everyone send their tips to, what is it, tips at chemchasers.com? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thanks.